So when I first started selling electric bikes, a lot of people would say, yeah, electric bikes are fine as long as it's for disabled people. But if you're able-bodied, then you shouldn't ride an electric bike. I would always wonder like, what does that mean? And I think initially when I got into electric bikes was primarily for like recreation and just getting out and spending time with friends. I had my own personal physical limitation of a back injury and I hadn't been physically active for a while. But I always had trouble with this idea. If you're physically able, you shouldn't ride an electric bike. Now as electric bikes have become more mainstream and they kind of become more socially acceptable for everybody to use, sometimes I think that this class that they can often serve a really great need to can often go unnoticed. We might be leaving people behind in the types of bikes that we're offering and not really considering like all the different possible uses here. So I just wanted to create this video to share just some information, some things that I've learned and seen over the years. I've been fortunate enough to see a lot of things in the years that I've been in this business and the places I've traveled and the people that I talk to. So I just figured this would be a cool way to share it. So I hope you enjoy. So as most people know at this point, e-bikes are widely known for that help in getting people out on bikes who may need a little extra assistance because you have limitations in your physical abilities or you just want some extra help. But outside of those who are riding just for recreation or fun, a lot of people have difficulty walking longer distances and they hopped on e-bikes and rode for miles. It opens up a lot of possibilities for people. Some of these places might not be easy to access by a car or even a wheelchair, but an electric bike might provide more access and opening up that access is just really great. But beyond just the physical abilities that an electric bike might afford people, there's also a lot of mental health benefits. Not being exposed to people, not experiencing nature, the vitamin D, just the sun and different things like that. It really can take a toll on you, not just physically, but mentally as well. And sometimes it's just overcoming some of that intimidation you might have. One of the things I used to be intimidated about going out, if I'd be able to keep up with my friends because of my deteriorating health at that time, would I be able to go, but maybe Maybe I would have trouble getting back. Leveling the playing field is a really big deal. E-bikes can also help people with rehabilitation and easing them back into being active. It has a lower impact on joints and other activities like running. It's also great for your heart, especially when you control the rate of effort with electric assist. You have more control over your workout while still getting where you need to go. Actually, my father has a quintuple bypass and he did this ride with me, the Five Borough Bike Tour. We did a 40 mile ride. I can't imagine him doing that without electric assist, but he did it with assist and he really enjoyed the whole time and it was great. It's freedom. It's not about fast though, it's just the freedom. Just to move about and not... Amazing. A couple other points I wanted to discuss before we get into the actual bikes is just another benefit, which is that they're more affordable and accessible. A lot of times when people might have disability, they might not have the same earning potential, or maybe they're out of work. And then owning a car and all the expenses associated with that, that can be quite costly. So to have another option for transportation that's also providing some level of rehabilitation and improving your mental health. I mean, this does of course require more physical infrastructure, but fortunately here in the US, it seems like we're starting to move in that direction. We got a long way to go, especially compared to other places like the Netherlands and such. But I think the more we bring this up, the more we talk about it, the more we help people to understand like this is the truth. This is the science in a lot of ways that like bikes are good, e-bikes are good, giving people alternative forms and means for getting around. It's really good. So borrowing from this idea in the Netherlands, this thing started to come up more and more for me. You know, I started to see in the bike lanes, you have these special different types of adapted bikes, which we'll talk about some of the different ones there. You have motorized wheelchairs, mobility scooters, trikes, enclosed disability vehicles. This good infrastructure that they have there makes everyday necessities more accessible to the elderly and disabled in this community. This means on average, they're less reliant on others to take care of them. And I just think about that idea that a lot of Americans we end up putting into nursing homes just because they need some extra assistance. But meanwhile, if the built environment was set up appropriately, maybe that wouldn't be so necessary. And people can live and interact in their community. And to be able to experience all that entails. This also makes me think about this idea from Chris and Melissa Bruntlett when I visit them in Delft. They've written a couple of books and one of the topics they write about is aging in place. This idea that as you get older to have a community that can support you and you have everything that you need and you can get to the store nearby. That being said, while the infrastructure here isn't as advanced as in the Netherlands, 
There are still plenty of ways that electric bikes are being used as mobility devices in the U.S. and in other countries. Three and four wheel bikes can be good for balance. Throttle is another topic, and although we don't currently offer it in our shop, I think that this is something that can enable a lot of people. Although I would caution people to consider who actually might need it or not. I generally recommend people leaning towards pedal assist because it can help you really improve your physical health, but I know that for some, they might have physical limitations limiting them from pedaling or pedaling on a consistent basis. So totally understand it. Totally understand if people choose a throttle for whatever the reason. All right, we have to switch it up a little bit because the sun was doing some weird things over there. We'll get back into it. Everyone is different and has varying levels of capabilities. Bicycling Magazine had an article about Leo Rogers, a 35-year-old man who at the time lost his leg 13 years prior. He uses no crank arm or pedal on his left side of his bike. He uses his bike as a way to get around with one leg much more easier than he could a wheelchair. He claims it lets him do whatever he wants and to do it without the help from anybody. But now we're gonna get into the bikes, like just talking about some different specific electric bikes. I mean, obviously, Obviously, there's different adaptations you can make to any bike, but these are some bikes specifically designed for people with different limitations because they definitely vary. So this one German company that I've been following for several years, but I got to chat with some more at Eurobike is called Fautech. So they're made in Germany and the company believes in no compromises when it comes to safety. Their bicycles and tricycles are made for both children and adults, including the elderly. They are also suitable for therapeutic purposes. Fautech primarily makes bikes for people with disabilities. They've created all sorts of accessories to aid in this, like more comfortable seats, foot and leg fixators, and foot shells to ensure your feet stay in place and don't slip. They also have disability cranks for people who don't have a full range of motion, shorter crank arms. Sometimes people might have one leg that's shorter than the other. Some of these things could be used on traditional bikes, but it's great that they have this like full suite of products available with their bikes. They also have this like shifter support knob. People have arthritis and they can have trouble using a grift shifter. And their bikes are made completely in-house all the way from construction to fully assembled. So I think they have a pretty compelling product. We're only considering offering them in our shops. I don't think that there's many brands out there that offer a similar quality product for this type of market. I think it could be interesting. I'm wondering what you guys think. Is this something that we should potentially consider? I mean, if you look at their lineup, they have some pretty cool bikes. You look at the Scubo, which seems to be one of their more popular versions. It's really comfortable. I mean, it's the type of thing I, I think I'd be into even riding myself. One of the things that they are pretty big about on this product is that all the controls are within your view. So you can really easily see the handlebars, the gears, front wheel, everything like that. Has a really large, comfortable saddle, and it's got kind of an inclined position for a really relaxed riding. If you wanted to, you could very easily put your feet on the ground. This is one of their more performance versions as it has the Bosch cargo line motor along with the roll off hub. So really quality stuff here. It has a 286 pound weight capacity and it can even accommodate additional 44 pounds for luggage. Parking brake, hydraulic disc brakes, and all sorts of attachable add-ons as you saw earlier. The Roma is a little bit of a less expensive version, has a slightly less powerful motor, might work well for people in a more flat area or maybe if you don't need as much power. And the Roma would be the most accessible version with the super low step through. They have another version called the Tebow 4 and it's a four wheeled bike, which you don't see too much in the United States, partly because there are some laws restricting them in many places, but I haven't really found enforcement really follows that, but something to be aware of. That being said, I imagine with ADA, you'd probably have a lot of protections. But that being said, I think it's really compelling product. And it has a very stable base with those four wheels. And it's also really comfortable with the wide saddle, adjustable, everything like that. Another company I got exposed to several years ago had some pretty interesting bikes. It's called Van Ram. This company's from the Netherlands and they have a whole bunch of different special needs bicycles for people with disabilities. And they specialize in tricycles, wheelchair bikes, which you can actually carry a wheelchair on the bike pretty cool. Double rider bikes, like side by side. It's interesting that we don't have more of this in the US, but I guess maybe that's just by nature of the way the bike market is specifically targeting sport. Although we do have some interesting adaptable bikes specifically for sport, but we'll get into that in just a bit. 
So each of their models is also available with electric assist. They have the au pair wheelchair bike, which allows you to cycle with children or adults who cannot cycle on their own. So it's pretty cool because one of the joys of bicycling is to like experience the wind in your hair, as they say. They have another one, it's called the Fun To Go, which is a double rider, bicycle or three-wheel tandem where you sit next to each other. One of the cool things I've experienced is like just carrying different people around in my cargo bike, including Tara sometimes when we're filming, is it's nice to share a bicycle with somebody because you can just share a conversation. And this is something overall, I think a lot of tandems kind of work for this type of purpose. We actually set up a family in Southern California that the one son, he's actually legally blind, but he's still able to enjoy the tandem with his father. Really cool, really interesting guy. He's got a whole website and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll link to that below because I think it's worth uh, checking out. We also recently received an email from a customer of ours named Elaine. Her job used to be a cycling tour guide and she had taken trips all over the world. She had developed a brain tumor, which did a lot of damage to her balance, and she thought that her days of riding were over. However, she realized by using electric tandem with her partner, she was able to get back on the bike due to the extra help balancing. Megan Elaine actually just completed a month-long tour in Northeast Canada. It's awesome to hear about how these bikes are helping people to get out there and do the things they love when they might not otherwise be able to. And as I mentioned before, in the Netherlands, there's a bunch of vehicles called mobility scooters or micro cars. They're mainly used by elderly people and mobility scooters can be covered or open and used on the bike lanes. And the enclosed disability vehicles are enclosed. Most of them have a gas engine and four wheels. They still work well and they can be used in bike lanes. The micro cars are mostly four-wheeled mopeds with enclosed bodies, but they're classified as a moped and not a disability vehicle, even though it's quite often that disabled people are using them. But they cannot be used in bike lanes, although you do see them there sometimes. So these mobility scooters and enclosed disability vehicles are also allowed in pedestrian areas, making it much easier for people to use them to get around if they want to go grocery shopping or whatever. And, and you see that, you, you know, I mean, that's ultimately what people are using them for. They're not just joyriding, they're like going and running their errands. Microcars, while they're not able to ride in bike lanes, they're often driven by older people who are no longer want to or feel capable of driving ordinary cars. Keep in mind, you have a higher responsibility for other safety when you're driving a car in the Netherlands, not really like the US, which I don't want to get into that topic, but basically uh, there's not that much liability for an individual driver, but that's a whole nother story. These things though, basically they're smaller and slower. They can't be driven on normal like motor and truck roads. I guess the argument's made that they're generally safer than normal cars, you know, especially if you think about the mass of them. They're, you know, several hundred pounds as opposed to several thousand pounds. That being said, there does seem to be some controversy over these claims. Well, something that I have a good amount of experience with is just cargo bikes in general. We're often seeing parents of special needs kids, you know, carrying their kids on these type of bikes and it really works well. That being said, as with these other bikes, you know, a lot of times you have to get crafty, if you will, some different customizations to make these things work appropriately. Maybe this bike is originally designed to carry small children, but you want to carry a, a small adult that might have some physical limitations. These things are technically possible, but it's, you know, you got to get creative with it. I think if you can think outside the box, uh, a, lo a lot of things are possible. And we work with a lot of different brands, but there's more and more companies coming out with these types of products as well. I often recommend front loader bikes in these types instances because generally have an easier time carrying an adult especially if you're a little bit smaller yourself because of that lower center of gravity and a lot of times people need some sort of enclosure or like you know wall sometimes people don't always have like the same physical strength to hold themselves in place so you kind of need something to to strap you in or different things like that. So another topic that comes up a lot is the weight capacity of bikes. I mean, we made a specific video on bikes that are made for heavier riders, but even still people can feel some limitations there. Oftentimes somebody might be in a situation when you have a disability and you know, you start putting on weight and it kind of goes more and more. So having a bike that allows you to get started and get out there is really helpful. One thing that we saw in Germany was this thing, it's called the XCYC bike. It's called the Pickup Balance Bike, and it's a three-wheel bike 
It's designed specifically to be easier to get on due to like the lower step in the frame, but I think they also use it quite a bit for commercial purposes. But they say that the rider can be up to 352 pounds, which is pretty considerable. At the moment, they're not available in the US, but maybe that'll change. Another is recumbent bikes. Recumbent, the basic idea is that it's in a laid back reclining position. And this helps a lot with the ergonomics of the bike. The rider's weight is kind of more distributed across this longer saddle. Some people might have limitations on just like in their sit bones or like a certain nerve, like some people could have a sciatica or something like that. One of the challenges with recumbent bikes is that you're often a lot lower to the ground. So you might not have the same visibility out on the road. So motorists might not be able to see you as well. There are some recumbent bikes that are sit a little bit more upright, especially some of these that are made for adaptive purposes. It's nicer when the seat is a little bit higher. So if you have to kind of get down into the seat, not having to go so low could be helpful. You, you oftentimes have three wheels, different things like that. And beyond that, there's also some recumbents that don't just use pedals for your feet, but you can also use with your hands. Uh, this is often considered what's called a hand cycle. One of the things actually you see quite a bit of this in the military space is for those you don't know, I'm a disabled vet. There's actually programs through the VA that they can help connect you with a recumbent bike or different things like that, depending on your limitations. One of the brands that we've worked with before for recumbents is called HP Velo Technique. It's a German company. One of the cool things is they have this like full suspension bike. It's called the Scorpion FS20. This thing's pretty cool because it's a recumbent and it's full suspension. I'm all about suspension. And this one's also available with electric assist. But I think with the suspension, it also really helps with the mobility and balance and really staying stable. Because one of the challenges with the trike, a lot of people don't always recognize this. People say like, oh, a trike's gonna be way more stable. But you also have to consider that the faster you go, the more likely you might be to tip. You see this, like if you go around a corner really quickly, you're likely to have one of the wheels kind of come up. But if you have suspension, it helps a lot. So that's, you know, the basic idea. Another recumbent manufacturer is called Haza. They've been making recumbents and tandems for over 20 years. You can customize them they have all sorts of different setups there's a recumbent rider in the front and then a regular bike in the back really cool setup i always see it at Eurobike, and it's one of those bikes you see all these different weird bikes so that's always the one that's like that thing is cool. There's also some of these different conversions, like you can convert a bike to a tricycle and different things like that. I, I'm always a little bit hesitant about these products because there could be certain safety and liability hazards. I mean, from my side as a shop, I'm pretty hesitant to install these things. It's like we might take on some level of liability as to do that. And with a lot of these adaptations, we have to be really careful, but at the same time, like we do generally want to help and, and really help people to try these different products, like get something that's gonna work for them specifically. Moving those brake levers to, to one side or changing crank arms or different things like that. These are common things that we could do in the shop that really could help make the bike more adaptable to an individual. So in the US, bikes historically been treated primarily for sport, hardcore mountain bikers, road bikers, different things like that. And we've seen certain adaptations to these bikes, but specifically in the mountain bike area, there's been some really interesting adaptations, especially on the electric side. Now, some of these might kind of toe the line for some like motocross mashup of a bicycle or that sort of thing, because they have like a powerful electric motor with a throttle. The cool thing is people that are otherwise like really love the sport of mountain biking are able to get out there and enjoy the trails in a similar way. Now, there are times that people kind of don't feel so great about this. There's actually a kind of vibe viral video that went around where this guy was on an adaptive bike and he filmed this mountain bike rider just giving him a real hard time about being out on the trail. Seriously, dude, you're not supposed to have e-bikes on this thing. Uh, this is a handy fat cat piece of equipment. And? And what? Show me the rules saying that you're allowed to do this. He, you're serious? He's like, I, I can't walk, man. Like, you're really giving me a hard time for being out on this thing? It's tough. You just know that this is a bit controversial. I, I know it's challenging. I mean, like, a, a lot of mountain bikers fought really hard to get access to the trails, but 
come on, like we gotta find ways to, to share and get along and like work together. Let's think about that. So, and actually oddly enough, People for Bikes had an article on their website about this nonprofit called Move United. And it's a company dedicated to improving the off-road experience for riders with disabilities. And overall, they're like just always like creating like different ideas and like different ways to adapt bikes to fit individuals. Like hand cycles and recumbents, they've been around for a long time, but electric assist is just making them a lot more accessible to more people. So this specific article was about a man named Joe Stone, who was a lifelong outdoor adventurer. And he had an accident, which caused him to be a quadriplegic. And he thought his lifestyle was over, but uh, he was able to keep pushing himself more and more on his adaptive bike, initially couldn't mountain bike. But after using electric assist on his adaptive mountain bike, he was able to get back and go again. Their overall goal is to create a resource to streamline the current fragmented state of trail resources. This would include data such as the narrowest point, the average width, max cross width of trail, because some of these adaptive bikes, they, they might be two wheels in the front and one in the back or different things like that. They might be a little bit wider, so you know some mountain bike trails might not be as accessible. So there was this other thing, pretty crazy. I saw it at Sea Otter it's called the Bowhead Hand Cycle. They recently made a Bosch powered one, but they've had other electric assist versions as well. Their idea is that they can take you places you've never been, back to places you're yearned to reach again. So pretty cool, I, I, I appreciate it. These guys are like really hardcore and like the product you could tell like the design elements, they're just not really messing around. So they sell adaptive and non-adaptive bikes, but they're really primarily designed for off-road and they have all sorts of different options carbon fiber stuff like custom cnc aluminum really pretty cool and then they have this new flow articulating front end which it's like it tilts and it's got suspension really wild stuff very advanced engineers and really respectable and this bike that i saw it has the new bosch CX motor with like SRAM Eagle 12 speed drivetrain. All the stuff you would see on like a premium electric mountain bike in this like three wheeled full suspension setup. It's cool. I mean, I'm not a huge mountain biker myself, but I could really respect like somebody that really got into this, might have had an injury, wants to continue to enjoy it and having products like this that allow people to continue to experience these things. All right. So I know I said a lot. And, you know, as I said before, I'm no expert on this thing. I have some of my own very mild limitations but even in just in that I can really start to experience how having some of those physical limitations can really have an impact on you so I'm excited about some of these different products and I'm encouraged you know more products to be released on the market and more companies to consider these sort of things as they produce bikes or, or trikes or whatever they might be, just to make them more accessible to more people. So I'm interested to hear from you guys. Do you have other ideas or other things that you've seen that you wanna share? Share them in the comments. I'm sure other people will appreciate it. I know I don't always respond to the comments, but I read pretty much all of them and it's always nice and I, I really get a further education through that process. And uh, I'm enjoying making these videos. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know we're kind of switching up the style a little bit. I'm in this horticultural spot, kind of cool. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I will see you soon. Take care.